Hello there. Uh, I'm going to give a tutorial today on using the MATLAB uh, program OpenProp to generate CAD models of propellers. I'm going to be demonstrating how to manipulate those using SOLIDWORKS. Uh, so if you don't know, uh, OpenProp is a MATLAB uh, script. Um, in order to get it to work, you need to have a, a copy of MATLAB. Um, a home version is $150, so if you're not working through university or university doesn't have MATLAB licenses for you to use, um, that would be your solution there to get this to work. Um, likely at university, if you have like a physics or you know engineering school um, that you know has programs and stuff like that, they're going to have MATLAB. Uh, it's a pretty powerful tool. Uh, next, you're going to need to download OpenProp. This is just a, uh, an, an, I'm sorry, a zip file um, with uh, some scripts and some source code for MATLAB to run. Uh, then I'm going to be demonstrating how to turn those into a CAD model using SOLIDWORKS. Um, the process of getting a SOLIDWORKS license is not quite as clear to me here, but again, uh, if you're working through university, it, chances are decent that they're going to have SOLIDWORKS. Um, if not, I'm sure just about any other sort of... Um, CAD suite is going to work for this, um, or you could maybe try Fusion 360, which is free for uh, educational uses. Okay, so once you download uh, OpenProp and extract the zip file, you're going to end up with a folder that looks like this. Uh, in it is going to be OpenProp. And then you're going to have uh, OpenProp.m. Um, these right here are output files for Repeller. You're not going to have these yet and you're not going to have that either. So it's just going to look exactly like this. Uh, the openprop.m is what you're going to want to open in SOLIDWORKS. Uh, it's going to look like this. Um, really all it does is run a source code uh, that is going to generate a GUI and you do some uh, calculations. Uh, so here we have this. Uh, this is what the GUI looks like. Here is where you can change um, all sorts of different uh, variables. Um, so number of propellers, uh, rotational speed RPM, um, size of propeller required thrust um, so uh, that's uh, you know at this speed that you would like to go what is the thrust of the body you're trying to propel uh, hub diameter uh, water stuff like that uh, pretty self-explanatory uh, right here these are very important um, these are uh, percentages of your radius as you move out in the propeller uh, the cord per diameter ratio so how um, long is the propeller from uh, leading edge to trailing edge uh, as a function of how uh, wide the propeller is total in diameter as it's spinning. Um, these numbers are pretty garbage. Uh, you're going to end up with something that basically looks like a maple leaf. Uh, it's just way too fat in the middle middle regions. It shouldn't really be uh, about 0.1 or lower. Um, that's something you're just going to have to trace out uh, and do for some trial and error. Um, thickness is going to depend on your material. These might need to be bumped up or down. That's something you're just going to have to decide when you know what you're going to be uh, making the propeller out of. So once you've put all these numbers in, and I'll show you how to um, get those to automatically input in a second, uh, you end up with this uh, dialog box, which is the output of your uh, propeller. So here you've got performance data. Again, it's going to repeat uh, ship speed, rotation speed, diameter, thrust. Um, and then it's going to give you the torque and the power, which are related based on rotational speed. Um, uh, that is required to turn your propeller to produce this thrust at that RPM going at this speed. Um, so this is what you're going to sort of iterate. Also an important number to note is your efficiency. Um, what you're going to want to do is, so, you know, number of blades is fixed. Uh, required thrust at a certain speed is fixed. That's how fast you want it to go. Uh, and then you get this from running CFD to figure out what the actual drag of your body is. Hub diameter for the most part is going to be fixed. Water is fixed. And then these are just uh, geometric parameters um, or uh, design output parameters. So what you're going to want to do is go through a range of uh, rotational speeds. So, you know, let's say let's start with 100 uh, RPM and see what this turns out. So say, for example, like, um, we want or we can output 300 watts uh, so at 100 rpm uh, you know with uh, a 0.7 meter propeller we're uh, only going to require 228 uh, watts to spin it which means we can bump up our rotor diameter uh, getting closer we're gonna have to probably bump this up a lot let's just go for a meter see what that turns out 314 that's close enough Okay, so now at, so at 100 RPMs, uh, it needs to be a meter in order to get these numbers. Um, our efficiency is 0.52. Well, let's say we want to investigate a different gear ratio. Uh, we're going to have 300 RPM. We know we're going to have to bring this down, so let's try 
0.6, uh, power's 280, so we'll probably bring this up just a little bit more. Uh, 321, that'll work. Uh, now we look at our efficiency, we find we have 0.51. So these are some pretty um, similar efficiencies. Um, you're gonna run into situations where perhaps this is even higher uh, and you're going to ha end up with some pretty indecent uh, efficiency numbers. Uh, ideally, the propeller should be around 0.8 um, for efficiency. Any less than that is is going to start. Well, obviously it's you know it's not efficient, uh, which is just generally not good. But um, a propeller about there should be reasonably attainable. Um, here again we have about 0.55. So um, could that be an asymptote of uh, the upper end of our efficiency with this sort of setup? Could be. Um, that's something you're just going to have to kind of iterate through, uh, changing your rotational speed. So if you have a gearbox um, or you're selecting your motor or uh, power input device or for our purposes when we're using a human powered submarine that's pretty fixed based on the pilot um, you know back to this guy here uh, it's going to be pretty fixed but you can change a gear ratio so you're going to have to kind of run through a range of that figure out your best efficiency and then you're going to end up with a set of numbers that are going to work really well uh, a nice thing that you can then do um, so if we look back at this main file openprop.m what we're doing is running uh, from source code openprop single.m so if we go back to this folder where we found open prop and we go into source code, uh, we can open up uh, a different file, again, called open prop single.m. And I've already got it open here. Here we have the option to uh, change those default values that show up in the GUI. So if we scroll down here, right at the top, we have uh, X ref def. So this is uh, R per R ratio. Uh, you can change these to whatever you want. Um, this is the cord per diameter ratio. Again, you're going to want to bring these down quite a bit. Um, thickness, again, that's going to change depending on your material. Uh, skew and rake uh, are just fancy numbers that are going to change the shape of the propeller. Not really uh, worth messing with unless you absolutely know what you're doing. Um, then we go down here. We can change the number of propellers, default, RPM, ro uh, diameter, speed, uh, you know, thrust, whatever. Um, so these are going to be really great, really easy to, um, you're going to want to change these for sure once you get around to uh, finding some numbers closer to what you want. So you, every time you open uh, open prop, you don't have to uh, retype in all those, especially your cord to per diameter ratios, because you're going to figure out those once and probably want to keep them. So uh, moving on from that, um, we're going to need to get this to uh, output some data. So open prop starts off with a pretty nice um, 3D geometry. Uh, preview of this uh, you can see it just kind of gen gen uh, generates a, a pretty standard looking um, hub uh, it shows propeller you can see uh, it's going to be traveling in this direction uh, rotating clockwise uh, you can tell by that by the way that the uh, pitch flattens out because um, this whole thing is spinning at the same angular velocity at a higher radius you're gonna have a higher tangential velocity so in order to get the same angle of attack throughout the propeller it has to be um, a flatter pitch uh, so you can see here that we have uh, a few lines, and these are uh, not arbitrary. Um, oh goodness! All right, stay. Anyway, um, we have uh, lines going this way. Uh, these are radial panels because they're going out in the radius. Uh, these are spanwise, I believe, panels. Well, uh, let's. Check, I should say right here, uh, a cord wise panel, sorry. Um, panels along the cord. Uh, we also have uh, our, you know, our leading edge, our trailing edge, we have our tip, we have our root. Uh, by default, SolidWorks is going to output um, xyz.txt files, uh, just a list of uh, x, y's, and z's um, in uh, this number here. So these are uh, number of radial panels. If we increase that number, we're going to get more uh, panels in the like the Z direction, so more radial panels. Uh, Cordwise panels, um, these are the ones again that are running uh, up and down, so they are, are you know, not really indicative of, of the shape of a propeller. Um, uh, SolidWorks would call these guide curves. Um, uh, this is also the number of points uh, per foil uh, at each section. Uh, so you can change those if you'd like. Uh, by default, like I was saying, SolidWorks is going to output um, just uh, one big file that contains uh, all of these together. Um, and SolidWorks doesn't really like to work with that. It just wants a file of X, Y, and Z going down the line with no uh, uh, no sort of um, 
words or anything like that muddying it up. Uh, so in order to get that output file, you're going to have to open uh, geometry.m. Um, and this kind of governs outputs. Uh, you're going to have to change this right here. This starts as uh, it's going to look like this, make rhino flag. Um, I haven't figured out really. There must be a checkbox somewhere that I've missed it where you're supposed to select that. I just changed it to a one because I, I, I just couldn't find it. Um, also, by default, it's going to want to output um, export SolidWorks uh, 18 one line, uh, which is just, uh, it's not great. There's no there's no new lines. It's just one big long scroll of text. And again, SolidWorks does not really enjoy that. Uh, so you're, it's going to look like this by default. You're going to want to uncomment that, comment this guy. Uh, and then, so like I was talking about in the uh, this file, um, by default, it's going to output a whole lot of extra stuff that you don't need. So what I've done here is uh, change this up a little bit. Uh, so we start off with the file name. We're going to create a folder with that name and go to that folder. So instead of ending up with a whole bunch of different files, just sort of in this, um, you know, this SolidWorks uh, root directory here, um, you can see these right here. Uh, these are the like geometry sort of some output files. If we were to do this without um, making a new folder for it, uh, such as this. Um, these would all be right here and it would just get really annoying. So um, this is what this does. This creates a new folder uh, and then starts uh, creating files uh, called section curve and then numbers one through 20 like we had before. Radial panels is 20. Um, you can change that number obviously if you'd like. Starts a new file um, and then outputs uh, X's, Y, oh goodness. Uh, X's, uh, Y's, and Z's. Um, so another change I've done here, two changes actually. Uh, this number right here is the conversion from meters to inches. By default for me, SolidWorks uh, will like uh, inches as inputs. Uh, uh, open prop by default will output in meters. So we've had to change that. Uh, another change for me, um, because of my rotational direction uh, for our setup um, this default rotational direction uh, would not work so uh, this guy right here uh, like we said is going to rotate uh, clockwise we're going to have to have it uh, turn counterclockwise just so happens that uh, this direction is the y direction uh, so i have put a negative here uh, you're going to have to change these for your purposes uh, and then i've also changed this um, instead of doing uh, kjl uh, like before i've done k1l for z uh, because as you can see, if we go back here, uh, this is giving the radial panels um, in a concentric circle with the center of the hub. Uh, in order to do what we're going to do, SolidWorks uh, likes to have uh, s uh, sketches on planes. So we're going to just take the first value of uh, the Z and use that for all of them. So basically making a projection onto a plane of this uh, curved foil. Uh, we're going to close each of the files as we're going through it um, and go through this uh, this loop. So through all 20 points per uh, radial panel, through all 20 radial panels, of course, like I said, you can change that if you'd like. Uh, and then uh, we're going to exit back out of the deck directory so that uh, SolidWorks can go on uh, outputting all of these other files it wishes to. So that's about all there is to it there. Uh, you've seen we have run this and generated uh, the outputs. Um, so default propeller is what we were running. Um, we have created this folder uh, with these uh, .txt files, which uh, contain x, y, and z coordinates. Uh, again, these are in inches. Uh, you're going to have to change that number. Notice there is no unit. Um, your CAD program is going to default uh, to whatever it uses. Uh, so this is what we're going to labor to produce here. Um, a propeller which is going to match uh, what we had in um, in uh, in MATLAB in that, uh, I'm sorry, in uh, OpenProp in that preview. Uh, so to show you how to do that, we're going to want to start a new prop. I'm sorry, start a new file. Once we've got that open, uh, we're going to be using this. So we're in feature. Uh, we're going to be going through curves, curve through X, Y, Z point. Uh, with this here, we're going to navigate to uh, that folder that we were just in where we could see the, um, uh, sorry, the uh, these text files uh, with the propeller. So again, uh, open prop folder, 
Um, this is the main open prop folder, the folder that was created with uh, export SolidWorks. Um, you're gonna have to go down here to text files. And here we have our 20 section curve files. Uh, one by one, we're just gonna have to go through and click on these. You can see already we have a preview. Uh, it's imported our, uh, oh, evidently 40, uh, X, Y, and Z coordinates for this curve. Click OK. And here we are. Uh, it's kind of hard to tell. This is eventually going to turn up a propeller. Um, uh, this is just one section, uh, one foil, one cross section of uh, what's going to end up looking our propeller. Uh, so go ahead and add the 20 there. If you lose your place, you can just see right here. So say, you know, like, oh, I forgot. Did I do one yet or no? Well, you can sort of sneak your eye over right here and see like, all right, I have one. Next up, I need to do number two. Just like that. Now we're stacking these on top of each other. So we're gonna go ahead and add these and come back once they're, uh, all 20 of them are imported. Okay, here we are. We have all 20 section curves imported. Uh, all 20 of those files turn into 20 curves in SOLIDWORKS. Uh, you should be able to tell we have a pretty good looking uh, propeller uh, shape. Uh, obviously, like I said before, it sort of looks like a maple leaf because our cord per diameter ratio is just all um, whacked up. Uh, if you can uh, rotate this, you can kind of see um, how it, you know, like I was talking about for the uh, angular uh, angle of attack of the propeller is changing as we move out towards the radius. Um, and these are our 20 curves on a plane uh, that we got from the output of uh, open prop. Uh, so what we're going to do now with these is we're going to go back over into feature. We're going to select lofted boss. Uh, and we're going to go to our tree and we're going to select all 20 of these curves. All right, here we go. Once we have all 20 selected, you'll be able to see we have um, a, sort of a, a reference circle which you can drag around uh, the profile in order to make it um, the uh, the twist rate, make sure there's no twist or the, the twist rate is right and the, and the way that it lofts uh, the curves. It's defaulted to the trailing edge of all of the profiles, so that's good. We know that it's going to be, um, they're all parallel or they're all um, in the same plane, I guess, if you will. So we're going to be good there. Uh, green check mark. And there we go. We have our model of our propeller uh, in SOLIDWORKS. Uh, from here, we're going to add our uh, attachment mechanisms. Uh, so we're going to start with a plane. Uh, first reference is going to be the base of the propeller. Uh, we'll make this a, an inch and a half off, I guess. We'll exit the plane, start a sketch on that plane. Come on. All right, once we've got the sketch open, we're going to, you know, I'll just make a circle. Really, this sort of attachment mechanism can look like anything you want it to. This will be just a, a, a good sort of standard example of, of how you can attach this propeller to your hub. So we'll just make a circle like that, assign it some radius. Call it three and a half inches. All right, now that that's there, we're going to go back and we're going to do another loft uh, from this circle that we just created. to the base of the propeller uh, first curve that we got from SOLIDWORKS. Uh, like I said before, you can see here the twist rate is kind of wrong. So if we were to uh, you know, do a, an OK on this guy, uh, it'll end up looking kind of crinkled like you're, you're trying to squish a soda can. Um, so we're going to have to go back and uh, mess with those points. So just go back to the loft, do edit feature. And we'll drag this guy down to the trailing edge like before. 
and then we'll get into a good uh, vantage point here so we can see uh, the tangency of this um, uh, of this leading or I'm sorry the trailing edge we'll make this parallel with it uh, so if you just imagine this line continuing up into here maybe bring this down just a little bit more uh, just like that and then we can see that this uh, sort of matches the uh, profile a whole lot better looks uh, like a much more native um, sort of transition uh, so now we're going to move into screw holes uh, so uh, this is like I said just one way of doing it if you want to bring a bolt in from the bottom and have this tapped you could certainly do this um, I've just found that this works really well uh, so it looks like top and bottom are gonna be pretty good you could do left and right depending on your pitch uh, well, I guess this would be the the front of the submarine this is the back of the submarine or the boat whatever um, so for us it'll be on left and right uh, we'll just make some circles here of uh, some arbitrary sizes I don't have a, a clearance chart in front of me make sure these are in line with the uh, the center and the vertical distance just for repeatability of this for uh, so we know that our, our hub and our propeller are going to have um, repeatable uh, matching geometries uh, we'll assign these a, a radius oh, I always say we're using quarter inch screws And finally, we're going to make sure these are an appropriate distance from the center, or appropriate and repeatable. That looks a bit far out, so let's make that an inch. Okay. So these are our screw holes, like I said, so we're going to make them through all. around and make sure we haven't cut our propeller at all this face is good that face is good uh, then we'll go ahead and uh, make some reliefs for the heads of the screws uh, similar processes before and then all you're gonna have to do is here is uh, check your um, spec for the screw that you're using make sure you leave enough room for the head um, We'll just call it a half an inch. I'm going to do from offset. give it about a quarter of an inch of meat to hang on to and then this is going to be through all again oop mess that up let's forget this step You can see now that we've cut out a relief, so the screw is going to come in from the top here. Uh, this is space for the head, and this is where the threads are going to go. Obviously, not screwing into the propeller, but then screwing down into the hub. Um, again, making sure that we haven't uh, uh, cut into the propeller face. We're good. Um, another good recommendation is going to be to add um, a relief for a dowel pin to go in the bottom here as you're spinning the propeller. Uh, you don't necessarily want all of that. Um, uh, you know, force transfer to the propeller from the torque of the, the hub uh, to go through the screws. If using beefy enough screws, you, you could probably get away with it. Um, but throwing a half inch dowel pin just by, you know, throwing another cut extrude in the bottom here is it will be will be good. Uh, so then uh, manufacturing is sort of up to you. You can uh, 3D print these if you have a, a good enough method for that. Uh, you can machine them on a, you know, probably need a, a four axis uh, CNC to do that, but that wouldn't be terribly hard at all. Uh, machine amount of aluminum or whatnot. And then, uh, 
you know, with that there, you're going to end up with a pretty darn good propeller. Uh, things to keep in mind are, like I said, the cord per diameter ratio uh, default of open prop is rather garbage. Uh, thickness you're going to need to change depending on your uh, material, like uh, the end here. Um, you know, this is just generally a pretty thin propeller from probably about halfway up. So um, if you're using a, you know, a material that you're worried about breaking, definitely go back to um, open prop and add some more thickness. Uh, you'll recall from the uh, output file of uh, just the XYZ coordinates, those were dimensions, dimensionless. So when you start your uh, file, you're definitely going to need to make sure you have uh, your desired uh, units activated. So for me, that defaults to inch pound seconds. We're using inches, obviously. Um, if you change that factor that I showed you in SolidWorks, uh, it's going to be different. So um, if you take get rid of that 39, uh, uh, factor it's going to output in meters so you need to make sure you have SOLIDWORKS in meters because it's not going to know. If you uh, put one curve in there uh, and then you realize you messed up and you try and do it again uh, the rest of them are going to be messed up so you just have to start a new file it's not that big of a deal. Um, yeah that's about it uh, feel free to shoot any questions my way I'll definitely help in any way I can. Um, uh, questions about the process, uh, designs, uh, manufacturing, anything like that um, I am certainly here to help. Uh, good luck and have fun.